ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate with your host, Kevin Perenio. As an owner and C-level executive for 20 plus years in finance, KP is here to serve you with all of his knowledge and experience. Whether you're a broker, realtor, or just interested in the economy, this is the podcast for you. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. It is after midnight <clears throat> on a Monday, and um, I am fully recovered from Stagecoach Weekend, for those who saw my last video. Uh, don't worry, I didn't go VIP, just did the Gen Pop tickets. It was pretty cool. I even came home early and rested up on Sunday and got ready for our long senior manager meeting we had today, which was very good. We were having... Uh, couple good months here in a row, March and April, and um, looking at uh, May as being a, another breakout month for us. So spring has sprung, it's purchase season, and that is the FDIC, the federal regulators have come calling. They're knocking on your door and closing down another bank, First Republic Bank. And I'll talk about that and some pretty cool insights that I have to a company called Picasso uh, that I think is uh, relevant as it relates. But what else has happened three times? We've got three knocks of resistance on the 10-year trying to break above um, its technical range on the yield. And then we've got three taps of the dollar coming down to support. It's caught around 100. So these are forces, major macro forces, that are all kind of coming to this pinch point. This week, the Fed is talking. And uh, over the next two days, they're meeting, the Federal Open Market Committee meeting, the May 3rd meeting is a 95% chance they will only raise 25 basis points. What everyone is looking at is what is the language. So I saw, um, I wrote some notes a while back. They're using words like ongoing, uh, firming, and disinflationary. So we'll see what they're uh, going to bring up um, on Wednesday. That's when they uh, actually have their press conference and start talking about the language, where things are going, what they're doing. And a quick little look at the CME tool over here. For the June 14th meeting, there is currently a 69% chance that this is the last rate hike. Now, don't forget, this is also the same market, the bond market, that is saying there will be Fed rate cuts later this year. So, as of right now, 27% chance at the June 14th meeting there will be another quarter. But with these bank failures and with credit tightening, because we know um, that's typically what happens when there's um, higher rates and... Uh, bank failures, that it's as if there's another 75 basis points of rate hikes added in, even though the Fed isn't actually hiking, uh, you know, up to 6%. So now what I will say is that this Fe this First Republic Bank, okay, FRB, uh, they, uh, it was orderly. Um, it was kind of pre-announced. It's like the least surprise ever of bank failures and about 30 billion was put into it. I believe three different banks put 10 billion into it. So let's just call it um, Chase, City, and um, Wells, I think are the three that tried to backstop and show support for this bank, um, you know, about a month ago when all the stuff was going down, um, a little bit more even I'd say uh, during uh, March. But you know what, deposits kept coming out. They kept coming out. Okay, so, um, Picasso, P-A-C-A-S-O. I've talked about it a couple times. I've done some videos from um, uh, a, a co-ownership of uh, a Park City home and a beach home in Newport Beach Peninsula. And I love the fact that Picasso has created a new housing class, a new class of home ownership, which is democratization, the co-ownership of second homes. Now, I'm not here to talk about uh, how awesome it is to have a second home. Uh, when 57% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I've been there and done that. But my point is Picasso um, is a huge, um, I guess, uh, in, uh, they placed their money with First Republic Bank. And my two loans, I had to take out financing to buy my units, my one-eighth units. My loans are through First Republic Bank. And so uh, about two weeks ago, there was an investor call. And full disclosure, um, I am... Um, I did uh, get an invite as an owner to invest in their Series E round, and I did put some money into it because I believe in democratization. I believe in co-ownership. I believe in these new asset classes. Can't wait to see. I mean, had Cal Hafa, 
The California Housing Finance Authority believes in it because they just pumped out $300 million in Dream for All funds to take place in the upside of equity sharing and appreciation for these borrowers they're helping with the down payment. So there's a lot of creative ways to help people buy something that's out of touch. I can't pay $4 million bucks for a house, a second home, but I can buy one eighth of one with the help of some financing. Second home, co-ownership, eight LLCs, potentially on title. I am an owner, I'm on title. It's not a timeshare, although you do share your time. It's a new asset class. Those loans, I am assuming, are now uh, part of JP Morgan Chase. So um, I haven't got the statement yet, but what I liked is um, in, um, you know, in light of this First Republic Bank failure today, which was not systemic, again, was orderly, um, which is why the market wasn't so shocked like it was expected. Um, Austin Allison, the uh, co-CEO of Picasso, he's one of the co-founders of Dot Loop, which is um, uh, something the real estate uh, community uses quite a bit for um, e-signatures of documents. He put out a memo saying, hey, we, you know, we have a great relationship with J.P. Morgan Chase. We already had some of our assets moved over there. So, um, you know, was that some of the run on the bank? Prudent uh, stewardship of the money of Picasso? Um, you know, if they're already having a bank relationship, who knows what was going on behind the scenes? You think maybe Jamie Diamond, Diamond Hands Jamie was having people call, uh, you know, gentlemen like uh, potentially Austin and um, Spencer Raskoff, by the way, is also a co-CEO uh, and founder, co-founder, excuse me, of uh, Picasso, the founder and CEO of Zillow. Uh, had a chance to meet with him a couple times. Brilliant dude. Um, and, you know, you don't think Chase is calling them like, you know what, just move your money over here. We'll, we'll make sure you're taken care of. I don't know. I'm, that's all speculation. I'm not trying to get in the way of that. Uh, but I thought it was a very interesting insight to see how um, these things played out. And I've been getting some, you know, memos and some uh, you know, uh, been on some seminars where they talk about, you know, taking care of the business entity Picasso. And that's one of many. Now, remember, uh, Chase didn't buy this. Okay. There are a few bids out there. Um, I think the winning bid was like 10.3 billion, 10.3 billion. They have a trillion dollars in cash assets, literally a trillion dollars, like 10.3 is nothing. Anyway, no one was bidding until after the FDIC put up our tax dollars to come out of the fees of 10.8 billion. Okay, so 10.8 billion to backstop that. And only once receivership by the FDIC was complete did the bidding process go forward and chase one. Now, I believe one of the details I saw is that there is something like $50 billion in long-term asset losses backstopped uh, by the FDIC as well. So pretty good deal. Um, a creative to shareholder value for Chase. They get to build their uh, presence in coastal territories where they aren't exactly all over the place. And then they get to help out and build their wealth management. So um, no systemic risk. So what is systemic? Maybe it's the multifamily market. Maybe it's these loans coming for due to maturity uh, in the office space market. Commercial loans is really the big one. Survive to 25, if you remember. That's what <clears throat> one of the sayings was out there. Blackstone's B-REIT, all right? Blackstone's Real Estate Investment Trust has $70 billion in um, commercial multifamily assets. Um, they had their sixth month in a row where they hit their limit, where they only allowed something like um, 1.2, uh, $1.3 billion in withdrawal requests were fulfilled the month of April, even though $4.5 billion of those invested in the BREIT were asking for assets to come out. And, well, they weren't allowed. So is that the next shoe to drop that's out there? Is that the next... Uh, no, uh, known unknown, right? Uh, you know, this whole thing with held to maturity on these assets for mortgage backs and treasuries, Chris Whalen, an institutional analyst, has been knowing this for years. So it's been a known, known or a known, un it's been a known, known to him, even though it's a known unknown uh, for pretty much everyone else. So, uh, you know, is the Fed going to induce a recession? They're fighting inflation. If 57% of people will live in paycheck to paycheck, inflation is the bigger problem. We just saw that in, uh, GDP, GDP growth was revised down, went down to 1.1% for the first quarter. We'll get another revision. Um, it came down from 26 in the fourth quarter. So we know the growth is slowing. Does that mean we're in a recession, soft recession, soft landing, no landing, hard landing? We're going to figure it all out. <clears throat> By the way, ISM uh, manufacturing data rose, but still in recessionary territory at 47.1. So uh, the Fed meeting is coming out. Big deal. And Apple, 
which reports earnings this week. Big deal. You know, Apple and Microsoft are responsible for 39% of all S&P gains year to date, and I'm not responsible for your losses, only your profits, not a stock investor. Go get advice from someone who knows what's going on. But you know what? Dollar comes down. These multinationals like Apple, Microsoft, they get more value. And if they continue to beat on earnings like every company, see 80% of half the S&P is reported earnings beats. Jobs report Friday too. Cheers. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. May the 4th be with you, for those Star Wars fellow fans out there. I'm not a huge TV watcher or movies or anything like that, but I do make time every now and then for a Star Wars series. Mandalorian was out, great series. And if you liked Rogue One, which was the darkest, most non-Disney Star Wars movie ever, uh, spoiler alert, everybody dies. Literally, everybody that's good dies in that movie. Uh, there's a series on Disney Plus called uh, Andor, which is the background story of Cassie and Andor. And I binge watched it. Again, I don't do a lot of TV watching, but I totally recommend it. Okay. Uh, Fed spoke yesterday, and the 25 basis point uh, rate hike came in. Now, I want to read something. It's very interesting. This is like the tidbit to, to draw out of there, okay? So um, I get uh, stock twits. I subscribe to stock twits which is um, a service out there that sends like a recap every day what goes on the market. And they did a red line version that a Wall Street uh, Journal reporter, uh, Nick uh, Temerow, um, he basically took the last Fed open market committee statement and then redlined it with only the changes that were read yesterday. And um, it's very interesting. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of red lines. I mean, I, I could show this to you again, but, but, there's one very important red line. So I just, I just want to say, so um, the last statement said, the committee anticipates that some additional policy firming may be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. In determining the extent of future increases in that target range, the committee will take into account cumulative tightening of monetary policy, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that was the last statement, not yesterday. And what they were saying is basically, we're going to do more rate hikes and we're going to look at the data and that will determine how many more we do. Red line, da, 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 da. all that stuff came out. So here was the difference. I, this is the crazy stuff when you listen to the Fed speak. This is what you're listening for. This is what like the world literally listens for. It's just a little red line. So instead of saying the committee anticipates that some, which means they're going to do a rate hike, Red line, here's how that statement now read yesterday. In determining the extent to which additional policy firming, uh, firming may be appropriate to uh, return to inflation 2% over time, the committee will take into... So they redlined all the stuff saying, we're going to do it. We need more. We've got to do more firming. We need to be sufficiently restrictive. That's the point of getting the rate as high as it is to restrict demand growth so we can restrict inflation. That's how they do all that. So the bottom line is everyone thinks that uh, the door has been shut for more rate hikes, but left unlocked in case they need to do it again. So uh, they didn't come out and say, we're done. Now, June 14th is the next meeting and they may say they're done. So uh, we've got a lot of data coming out between now and then. CPI, Consumer Price Index, we got a big read on uh, my son's sixth birthday uh, next Wednesday. That would be May 10th. So if you've been following MBS Highway and all the good folks over there, um, Barry and everyone else, they've been earmarking that date. Uh, Dan has talked about it quite a bit um, as well, that on May 10th, that the CPI Consumer Price Index, remember an index is 12 monthly readings of inflation in a row, all added together to get to whatever that number is. So when the new print comes out next week, next Wednesday, May 10th, um, for the April inflation report, April 23 data, that number will replace April 22's data. So there's always 12 data points, but the one from 12 months ago gets thrown out and that's a big one. It's a big number. Uh, we all know that housing was still going up like a crazy amount. Remember, in the CPI, what consumers pay for goods and services, 
Um, housing is a huge component of CPI. It's very big, actually. It's like 38.5%. It's called 39% of that entire index. So if the 12 month ago reading, which was very high, gets replaced by this past April's much lower reading, that could be a big drop. Let's call it half percent, 0.5%. Could be 0.6%. Could be a large drop in the overall CPI index. So if the Fed is saying they're going to fight inflation and inflation comes down, we had a PCE report last week, the personal consumption expenditure, which was 4.6% coming down. Uh, you know, is it going to stay high at 4.6? Is it going to continue to come down? Is CPI coming down? We don't know. But between now and June 14th, we've got another PCE. Um, I think we even have another CPI, which will have the May data. So I think let's call it June 10th to, for round numbers, I guess, uh, you know, we'll have another CPI. Plus we have PPI. We have, you know, PPI reports that are coming out. Producer price indexes, two of those, plus another um, uh, personal consumption expenditure. So these data points are coming out. It could give the Fed uh, the right to say, okay, we are sufficiently restrictive. We see inflation coming down and they're going to hold this rate where it is. I don't think they want to break any more banks. That's been in all the news lately. All these banks getting broken because of um, higher interest rates by the Fed. Um, you know, if um, if a run on the bank happens and people pull their deposits, then these banks have to sell assets to make up for the fact that their liquid deposits ran away. So they got to liquidate um, assets. And if you have to mark to market some of these assets that you thought you're going to hold on to for a while, you know, let me explain that concept. So. Um, What's wrong with a 3.25% mortgage-backed security? A three and a quarter mortgage rate. That's a great note, right? That is a fantastic note rate because that bar is probably never going to leave. <clears throat> so that bar is just going to make their payments in that loan until some life event happens. Remember the seven Ds, life events that force people to move or change or do whatever regardless of their uh, mortgage interest rate. Deployment, deployment first because we put our veterans first. Diamonds, getting married. Diapers, had a kid, got to get a bigger house. Debt, because you got a kid, you got to get a bigger house and bigger stuff. Divorce, all right, let's split the assets and go find another house. It's two houses now. Hey, maybe you need debt again because you got divorced. Well, we won't count that again. Then downsizing, kids moved out, get a smaller house. Death, let's disperse the assets. These events still force people to move, but a three and a quarter rate that's held for maturity now more than likely will be stuck in the books longer, which will be paying that bank that holds that mortgage-backed security, that illiquid asset, for quite some time. Unless all their depositors take their money and they have to sell that asset to liquidate it so they can have liquid cash to um, you know, shore up their balance sheet that just went down because liquid deposits left. Well, you can't sell mortgage-backed securities um, on the open market. They say marking it to market. Um, a three and a quarter rate, nobody wants to buy that right now. Nobody wants to buy a 3.25% mortgage-backed security. Why would you want to buy that when you can spend your money buying a 6% mortgage-backed security? You know, there's more money in the current note rates. There's more uh, margin in that. And that's even with negative convexity, which means it's going to pay off sooner rather than the other one would. So these banks are being forced to liquidate illiquid assets that come with a loss. And those losses exacerbate the loss on their balance sheet which started when the depositors left. So that's what all this is about. So the Fed's fighting inflation. In the meantime, they're breaking banks. And hey, they're saying no problems here. You know, I mean, to their point, to Jay Powell's point, these have been orderly wind downs. You know, big money bags, JP Morgan Chase, they're sitting on $2.5 trillion in assets, liquid assets, if you will. So uh, I think a trillion of it's in cash, at least $600 billion for sure. So what's 2.8 billion? You know, get a little lint out of my pocket here and pay for uh, First Republic Bank, and we'll take it on. Especially if the FDIC for the next, you know, was it five, ten years, they're gonna backstop any losses. You know, so so we're on the hook for backstopping the losses. And Chase stepped in in an orderly fashion, giving them a lot of credit for doing it. They didn't have to. They helped. They did their part. They're also making money. But when Powell says he sees no problem with the banking system, it's because these wind downs have been orderly. So job support tomorrow is coming out. Um, are there cracks in the labor market? There's been, you know, more job cuts this year, unfortunately, because the economy is slowing. 
Um, we've noticed a big slowdown. I mean, we're down 44% year over year on, uh, you know, mortgages. Um, you know, I, it, that's um, just part of the process. It goes up and down. So with the jobs report tomorrow and Apple reported today, pretty good earnings. They guided down for the future, though, however, uh, saying that there is slowing down. So these are things you got to watch out for. But the Fed did its job. We'll see Jan, uh, June 14th, whether they finally pause. Have a great weekend. This is Espresso Martinis, by the way. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.